The European crisis is expanding and this is going on in Greece particularly at the moment. So I ask the question, are you ready for capital controls? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Let's discuss a bunch of different topics today. Obviously need to talk about Greece, but first I want to begin with this. Look at the stock market fluctuations are absolutely mad. You can see this right here, the Dow Jones down 350, up 200, down another 350, and so on. Over these past week here, and it has been quite a volatile market. What exactly is happening? Well, they're anticipating, obviously, the Federal Reserve. Will they use the word patient? Will they not use that word? And they make it about all of this silliness. But really, the market is simply waiting for the day when the Federal Reserve increases the interest rates. That's when things are going to be changed. Until then, the market is going to remain volatile. Let's move on to this right here, where we're looking at oil. You can see how the price declined once again as we're moving to a territory where it could be below 40 again. Look at this drop in uh, price of oil and they're suggesting once again that it's because of the inventory. Yes, all of this inventory appeared overnight magically and here they are once again dropping the price. There's a lot of speculation that is taking place right now. So I'll move on to this article here, and it's talking about the Dutch finance minister. He raised the possibility of using capital controls to prevent Greece from leaving the euro. The most explicit mention of that option to date by a top European policy maker. Capital controls are very, very important in a way to keep an eye on because obviously you will not be able to get your money out of the banking system depends on uh, how they apply these of course the capital controls could be just minimalist sort of deal as they have in the u.s currently for those who don't know but it could also be a full lockdown and i'll get to that in a moment he heads the group of the Euro Area Finance Ministers and he told the news that the 2013 Cypriot bailout shows temporarily shutting down the banks and restricting the flow of capital could stabilize Greece's financial system and allow it to remain part of the currency union. That's right. You can stabilize this all by locking people out of their money. That's what happened in Cyprus. It's been explored what should happen if a country gets in deep trouble. That doesn't immediately have to be an exit scenario. So check this out. For Cyprus, we had to take radical measures, banks were closed for a while, and capital flows within and out of the country were tied to all kinds of conditions. But you can think of all kinds of scenarios. So what we have right here is a situation where the people in Cyprus were unable to get their money out. Obviously, they were in long lineups. They began to protest. We had civil unrest. And this is a relatively small country when you think about the major cities that if this took place in a major city, what would happen? And obviously, it isn't going to be pretty. Capital controls are very frightening to me, and I've been talking about this for quite some time. mentioned it in my book here, where in the, every section here, every chapter has in a nutshell and basically breaks it down. But one of those points in one of the chapters, I wrote about deposit insurance. Deposit insurance allows banks to continue taking risks without worrying about a bank run by customers. And see, they're fooled because the customers are depositing all their money into the banking system thinking, well, don't worry about it. It's insured. I don't have to worry. I can just take my money out tomorrow and I'll never need to worry. But even if your money is not insured, you cannot take that risk. What if they impose capital controls and they say, look, Yes, you do have $10,000 in the bank, but today you're only allowed to take out 150. And what if you need to buy something? What if it was very serious, perhaps some sort of uh, medical surgery that you needed or something you, that you really needed that money for immediately? The government is imposing these laws upon you and that is your money, but of course you're not allowed to take it out. And that's all under the guise of stability. Let's look at this right here out of Bloomberg. And we're talking about this economist and he said, I'm throwing in the towel, Nielsen. If they don't want to play by the rules and this talking about Greece, they should get ready to leave. And please appreciate what a difficult conclusion that is to draw for a deeply committed European like myself. 
And uh, right here, he basically goes on to say how they are plain nuts because the uh, prime minister here, he said that Germany has to pay World War II reparations. And that's exactly what we're talking about. He said it's a blatant hypocrisy. Of course, they're just suggesting every possible means to try to get some money to pay these uh, creditors off. Cyprus is facing the choice of either signing up to the economic policies demanded in for aid or accepting life outside the euro area and virtually certain collapse of the economy, according to Nielsen. This is what could possibly happen, of course. They're pressuring them right to the very edge, wanting them to go on and basically accept their policies that they've put in place. But, of course, this isn't uh, what will remain to be seen of course there is so much to discuss here every single week it seems that Greece is out there and they're desperate for to make that next uh, next payment essentially and we don't know what's going to happen will they leave the eurozone well if they were just going to let them leave the eurozone they wouldn't have included them in the first place obviously being uh, definitely a weaker nation than Germany so it's really interesting to see where this will go Let's move on here. Greek PM to meet Russia's Putin in Moscow on April 8th. So what we discussed here before on this channel was specifically that who will come to the aid of Greece. And I said specifically, showed you on here, that Russia could extend its hand and begin some sort of partnership with Greece. And they began some initial talks not too long ago. This article is out of Reuters. Greek Prime Minister will vo uh, will visit Moscow on April 8th after being invited to talks by Russian President, a Greek government official said on Tuesday. So what exactly is going to go on? We're going to have to check that out as it comes in here. But I believe this could have something to do with Russia becoming a creditor for Greece and helping them out. They could develop a partnership. And this is quite interesting because we see sort of all of those who are sort of falling away from the eurozone are finding their way into the hands of russia and china so it's quite interesting the way that this is all working out and it seems that the tables have certainly turned when you have a nation like russia really bringing peace in many instances and doing things differently than what was uh, said that they would do this here is very, very huge news. Moscow Exchange launches Chinese renminbi futures. Can you believe it? From March 17th, the Moscow Exchange has started trading in futures contracts on the currency pair Chinese renminbi and Russian ruble. Big, big news here. This is the way that a, the dollar will fall because, of course, when you have more options, when you have more credit that is flowing towards something that isn't the US dollar, ultimately it weakens it. And what's been keeping the dollar going is the fact that it is in control and money is definitely flowing in its direction. But let's read on here. The launch has been driven by a substantially increasing renminbi turnover on the exchange growing volume of settlement in the currency between Russia and China, as well as newly rising demand as for hedging on such transactions. And then they basically go on to say how this, the next step made by the Moscow Exchange to um, offer the full range of RMB instruments and hedging tools to participants. You can go on here, but essentially they're willing to expand on this. And it's very big news because of the currency war that is taking place. I'm going to move on to this bring you back around to the US. And we're looking at housing starts. They are down significantly. Uh, back to 18 months ago, these levels, and it is volatile like crazy over these past 18 months, in fact. So we're looking at the housing crisis that approximately up to 2006 was just booming like crazy for obvious reasons if you didn't even need any money to buy the house. And here we have a decline that took place over the next few years, significant decline in fact, and we had millions upon millions of empty homes. So assuredly, the housing starts should definitely have declined. And then it began to pick up over these past few years, but it is still down so significantly from where it was at its peak, not to mention the fact that these homes are are still empty and yes a lot of investors have bought up at that lowest point over there and that did not do anything because 
there simply wasn't enough uh, people to buy them and there isn't really enough real demand. So this is what's happening in the real economy. Things are changing in the US. And then we have this and you know just to highlight here what's happening, the change that is occurring and you're looking at this essentially the different literacy, numeracy and problem solving and technology rich environments scales and they're uh, ranging here ages 16 to 65 and trying to determine you know essentially what the different countries and how they rank and you can see the United States near the bottom in all three of these categories Japan in fact in first uh, of all three Finland number two of all three and this is uh, really really interesting to see the way that things have changed over the years and you look at all the patents that are being developed and now China is the leader leading in patents around the world just things like this that are changing the tides of how these economies are built how these nations are built all of these uh, alliances that have been formed things are definitely in a changing territory at this time if you found this video informative please give me a thumbs up i have so much more information to go into i really want to get on this uh, educational program that i'm building i have four different uh parts uh, four different videos part of the uh, e-course now if you're interested in learning from the basics and you haven't seen these already perhaps you're new on here you just go to the main channel page of the money gps and scroll down and look for the money gps e-course and it basically starts you off uh, from the beginning and it's something that i'm working on i'm always looking for suggestions thank you for all those who have given me suggestions thank you to everybody for commenting on here i'm reading all your comments reading all the emails definitely and i'm trying to get back to all of them i have only a couple in the inbox now so i've definitely been very diligent to get back to all the emails as rapidly as i possibly can so i want to thank you for all of those and the last but not least if you're not already you need to be an insider it's where i give out all my best intel for free and that is available at themoneygps.com you just scroll down to the bottom fill in your email address and you get occasional emails from me with good short concise info